disqualify, you know, um, anybody and everybody in order to justify the murder of them, just like Hitler did the Jews before he annihilated them. So um, I completely agree with you. I know that there was uh, all different ethnicities there um, fighting for the Bundys and still stand for the Bundys because it's not the Bundys themselves. It is not the cattle themselves. It is liberty. It is freedom. It is stopping the federal government from stealing sovereign land. And in reality, you know, my question to Governor Sandoval would simply be this. If you claim that the federal government owns all this property in the state of Nevada, 89%, by the way, then why in the world are Nevada citizens paying any taxes to Nevada? Because that wouldn't even be Nevada. Well, I have to agree with you. Mr. Gordon, let me ask you a question. In, in, in your experience uh, locally there, because you know, you're, you're that particular demographic, in, in your, your opinion, how do we address what's taking place there uh, in accordance with Nevada state law, the Supreme Law for the state of Nevada, in, in that particular demographic, how do we go about addressing what's taking place right now on the Bundy Ranch? The first thing you got to do is understand how the news media is controlled in this state. Nothing that comes out in the mainstream news media is truthful. It is always biased and is always supportive of the good old boy system. Very few newspapers, small newspapers, uh, come out with the truth, one of them being the Las Vegas Tribune. I'm really surprised it's even still in existence. <laughs> so, mainstream media is controlled very tightly. So, that's one hurdle that you need to get over, okay? If you, if you had a newspaper to do what it's supposed to do, uh, you, you already uh, removed one barrier. Two, remember what the BLM has already done. They have done and committed some egregious acts. They have beat up a couple of women, and they have tasered eight to ten people for a lot of finger pointing and a lot of uh, verbal profanity, a uh, lot uh, uh, yelling and accusations. That's it. No aggressive action. No shots have been fired yet. Yet. But the BLM reacted and overreacted and used excessive force on peaceable American citizens mm -hmm. that were protesting what they believed to be an injustice and an unconstitutional act against the Bundys. So, that's, that's number two, the diversion. They are going to pitch and convolute anything that any, or anybody that stands up and professes that what they are doing is wrong. What the BLM doing is wrong. They don't want to hear that. They want to pick apart, just like what you said about how they took sound bites out of Sheriff Mack's um, uh, statement and twisted it and turned it and convoluted what he said and gave their opinion on uh, what Sheriff Mack is all about. You know, I went out there too on Saturday. I went out there on Saturday, and I I was told by a lot of my supporters that this may be a mistake for me to uh, meet up with uh, Clive, uh, Clive uh, Bundy and take photographs and, and show my support uh, that way, because somebody was going to convolute that as merely being a political uh, maneuver because I'm running for Clark County Sheriff. I, heard, I, I heeded their warnings, and I left before uh, Clive and Bundy returned to his home. I took some photographs with uh, uh, Governor Candidate uh, uh, David Vanderbeek, and I gave a speech. We made a YouTube uh, video, and I left before Clive and Bundy returned. I stopped and chatted with his son, who was on horseback, returning from uh, the field, and uh, we had a wonderful conversation. And then I left. Later on that evening, I called up Clive and Bundy 
and we strategized over the telephone for a good hour. And what I found from him was he's just a regular guy. He's not out to, to make any uh, major statements or become a hero to anybody. He is just a regular working guy. But his rights have been trampled on. And I support him. I support him all the way. Now, what are they doing with him? What is the news media doing with him? They've painted him a racist now mm -hmm. because he he's a little clumsy in explaining his feelings and his analogies that he's using with the way he's being treated by BLM and the federal government. And he used probably the worst example nowadays, and he's used the word race. He's talked about it. You cannot talk about that anymore. When I am sheriff of Clark County, I am going to remove the word race from any and all paperwork, documents, any reference, because that word race has destroyed so many lives. It has destroyed careers. It has destroyed uh, families. It has destroyed and killed many a people. Just that word alone. And you know how easy it is to get rid of that word? It is so easy. All you have to do is never mention it. I will replace that word within the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department with the word description. Race no longer has any meaning or any place in anything. And if you want to see it disappear, just never mention it. It's that simple. So, that's my take on it. And uh, you can go with that. Well, Gordon, you know, in a way I understand what you're saying, but in another way I think what has happened to this country is political correctness has gone way too far, and people need to be taught um, to quit being so offended. And if you curtail everything, then what happens is you silence freedom of speech because of fear of repercussions. Um, but I do understand what you're saying as far as description when you're talking about within the police department realm itself. However, um, I feel like African Americans should be proud to be African Americans. Hispanics should be proud to be Hispanics. White people should be proud to be white. That doesn't make you racist. That makes you proud of your heritage and who you are. And when we talk about that more and, and you know, and, and get that out there, then people really realize, you know, it, it's not so much a bad thing. Just like um, they have used that race baiting term in, in political realm so much that people are so tired of it. They're like, you know, can you pull anything else other than the race card? Because we're done with it, you know, and, and right. that's, that's on every level. That That's the Hispanics, that's the whites, that's the blacks, that's every ethnicity is tired of hearing that race card they really truly are and so i i understand using description as far as in the police department probably be a good thing um but as far as if people get to the point of where they're scared to say the word race or they're scared to talk about a race then we are curtailing to that political correctness which is stifling freedom of speech and freedom of thought what do y'all think? I have to agree with you, Lori. I really do. Both, both of your statements are highly accurate and, and intuitive, to say the least. I'm about out of time here, but I just want to make one quick point before I let you guys go. Okay. Uh, that point is this. When we're looking at the, at the Constitution of the United States, when we're talking about we, the people. Nowhere in there does it say we, the white people, we, the black people, we, the red people. It is we, the people. Absolutely. There is no issue of race. It's about Americans wanting to be free. This country was founded by people that were shaking off the chains of tyranny. Yes. When they did that, it was not an easy task. <coughs> History itself will teach you that people had to shed blood in some cases. It was a last resort. 
nonetheless, for those that were not willing to do what was necessary in the information war uh, and otherwise, uh, I, I believe the statement was made, may the chains of tyranny rest lightly upon you. It was a, a last uh, merciful prayer, if you would, for those that were not going to stand up for liberty, saying, hey, if you're not going to stand up for liberty, then may the chains rest lightly upon you, because in other words, you will be enslaved. Yes. So we've reached a, a place in our in our history in America where the powers that be have done anything and everything they can to erode away the very fabric of what makes us Americans, what makes us a free and independent people. So I would encourage each and every person within the sound of my voice to do something, whatever that thing may be, do something to further the cause of liberty. Be it start a blog, donate money to the TSPOA, or whatever organization you feel uh, is worthy of, of your donation to forward the cause of liberty. Oath Keepers, Tea Party, whatever the organization may be. Or just simply get out and talk to people. Get to know your neighbors and discuss what can be done to make your particular demographic, your neighborhood, a liberty zone Absolutely. rather than a charity zone. Does that make sense? That makes perfect so, sense. And um, I want to thank you personally very much for not only following your oath, but going down to the Bundy Ranch. You, you drove quite a long ways to go down there in the fight for freedom. I do want to thank you very much for uh, being an oath keeper, if you will, um, and for respecting liberty and freedom and, and being willing to fight for that, even at the chance that you might not have made it home to your family. And uh, I want to thank you for that again. Well, thank you for having me on the show, Lori, and Lord and everybody, thank you for, for tolerating me for this duration. And I want to say that I respect life, I respect liberty, I, I respect each of you for taking a stand. You could sit by on the sidelines if you wanted to, but you chose to do something. And we all have our stories to tell. We've all we've all suffered at the hands of, of people that are tyrannical or out of control. But what I would say is, is, you know, continue with what you're doing. Do not grow weary of doing good. Peace be with you, truth and honor, and until we speak again, God bless you. God bless God you. Well, I uh, can I share my my favorite quote with you, Gordon and uh, Lori. You two, absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead, Dave. My favorite quote of all time is, especially for what we're dealing with right now, is tyrannical government and or government overreach, uh, abuse, just all these different things, was by Thomas Paine. And it goes, freedom had been hunted around the globe. Reason was considered as rebellion. Um, and the slavery of fear had made men afraid to think. But such is the irresistible nature of truth that all it asks and all it requires is the liberty to keep appearing. Thomas Paine, Rights of the Man, 1791. That's beautiful. Yes, no true words could I, be I spoken. I said it better myself, and I'm sure I, I don't know anyone who could have. Yeah, absolutely. That is wonderful. Well, um, Gordon, would you like to stay on with me for a little bit and go into detail a little bit about your campaign and, and how things are going? Or do you have time yeah. for that? And I just want to uh, reiterate, you, you know, of course, that I am an oath keeper, a lifetime member. Okay, so it's 2009. Absolutely, I do know that, but the audience may not have. Um, uh, I will uh, ask you a couple of questions and put you to the fire. How about that one? I beg your pardon, say that again? I said, I'll ask you a couple of questions and put you to the fire. How about that one? Well, good, go ahead. <laughs> um, I haven't been able to speak to you in a while, and it is very good to have you back. Um, and I want to reiterate to the audience that this is uh, Gordon Martinez, who is running for sheriff in 2014 of Clark County, Nevada, which just so happens to be the same area where Cliven Bundy is having his issues with the BLM right now. And Sheriff Gillespie is, has not stepped in uh, to do his job. Now, uh, 